All across the United States, this tender scene of mothers caring for their newborn babies is repeated over and over, with four and a half million coming into the world each year. These babies bring the hopes for unlimited vistas in their lives ahead. But sometimes, the goals must change. Twelve percent of babies born in the U.S. each year arrive with challenges they will face their entire lives, such as mental and physical disabilities. Once the initial shock is over, parents fiercely search for help and answers to their questions. One place that provides hope and answers is Orange Grove Center in Chattanooga, Tennessee, a remarkable, internationally renowned facility that experiences miracles every day and has for 50 years. Orange Grove Center began in 1953 when a group of parents and community leaders joined forces to create a place where disabled children could reach their utmost potential. The first class of 25 students advanced quickly, dispelling myths that people with developmental disabilities could not learn or fulfill a productive role in society. The concept of Orange Grove was cutting edge and unprecedented. If you can imagine 50 years ago, uh, there was no such thing as special education. There were no residential options for people. Uh, basically, families had to fend for themselves. They had to care for their loved ones with the help of, of family and, and, and friends. Uh, the closest option for people living in Chattanooga was just outside of Nashville, a state facility called Cloverbottom, and uh, the option was not a desirable one. The visionary group took the name Orange Grove because that was the name of the school building they initially occupied. The name never changed, but in 1970, the center moved from that initial location to this one, and what was once a client base of 25 is now almost 700, with an annual operational budget of $23 million. Today, children and adults can come to the Orange Grove Center for day programs, returning to their own homes at night, while others prefer supervised independent living at one of the center's 52 homes that are located in neighborhoods throughout the city. I think people don't realize what a, a pioneering effort it was 50 years ago to have the vision and to develop the services, which, which weren't mandated, which, which weren't required, which weren't funded. So it, it really was uh, a volunteer spirit that, that created Orange Grove Center. Good girl. Is that fun? Because there are fun? preschool programs in the area to meet the needs of the developmentally disabled, services at Orange Grove start with school age and continue through a sizable population of senior citizens. Individuals come here through referrals from those preschools or from the school system. The primary diagnosis of the population served by Orange Grove is mental retardation, but many have physical handicaps and chronic health issues. The goal of Orange Grove is to help each person be as independent as possible. For some, that will ultimately mean working in the community. For others, the goals are different, but no less monumental when accomplished. It's all very individualized. Um, Students may work on anything from communication skills, which can be something as simple as looking at the cup when they're ready to drink, or using the switch to activate the computer. So it's a wide range of skills. We also do a lot of sensory stimulation. Almost everyone participating in the programs arrives on transportation provided by the center because many require adaptive equipment for transport or cannot travel independently. Once the individuals arrive on campus, they enter bright, cheery classrooms with highly trained, enthusiastic teachers, carefully monitoring the progress of each child and adult. Orange Grove is an all-inclusive facility. There are state-of-the-art medical facilities with physicians trained to meet the needs of this population. Even dental needs are met here. Physical therapy can be done on site. Hydrotherapy helps work on strength, balance, and walking. In the large swimming pool, what appears to be play is actually important skill development. 
Art and music classes are also important opportunities for skill development and at the same time provide a great deal of enjoyment for the participants. Much of the success achieved at Orange Grove is because there are almost as many staff members as there are people served. Most Orange Grove employees have worked here for years, feeling that the rewards of their profession are immeasurable. I've worked here for 15 years and I love it. I've not found any other job that, that I prefer working at. And the best way to get familiar with what's going on in Orange Grove Center is to actually come over and see what's going on because I think you'll be very impressed. Most of the population at Orange Grove was born with disabilities, but that is not always the case. One thing that, that society doesn't understand is this it can happen to anybody. It can be your child, your grandchild. It's not just because somebody two generations ago in your family had a handicap. Um, I've had children that were totally normal and then at 10 months of age were in a serious car accident. And this particular family has really struggled over the years to be able to accommodate and compensate for his needs. It totally changes their life, totally. Now, are you ready? Sit. Those changes are heart-wrenching. But there is promise for the future. And that future can become brighter through the work done here at Orange Grove. There is a place for their child in this world like for any other child. It might be a different place than that they think of, but each child in this classroom has its value and its place in this world. And that's what we try to work to. Finding a place in the world for these children with special needs begins in the classroom. Classroom placement is based on ability and need rather than age. Those who have similar skills in the classroom can be better served by the teachers. This classroom is for children who need assistance with almost everything. Most of the kids in this room have sensory problems or, or problems tolerating sensory input. So we spend a large part of our day doing sensory stimulation as well as adaptive positioning um, to help not only facilitate certain skills but to keep deformities from occurring. With tenderness and patience from highly trained teachers, these children will progress and eventually move to other classrooms to further their skills. For children whose disabilities are less severe, they are channeled into classes where their skills can be developed and greater independence nurtured. I get the youngest children and the children that come new to the center so that we can uh, evaluate, assess and see if the child is appropriate to stay within this room, room one. Uh, from there, we try to provide the children with a wonderful day every day. We try to find their strength and build on them and add even a little more of the done strength. Awesome. Here, let's fold your plane now. Are you ready? Are you done folding? Reed? We work mostly at the beginning on following a command, listening to their name, um, playing a lot. I'm for playing a lot. We start the morning with a free play at 9 from 9 to 9.30, and then we start with the more serious stuff. We even try to teach some academics, uh, as in uh, recognizing their name, knowing their phone number. That might not be accomplished within this room, but it will later on be accomplished in one of the other rooms. Sometimes children from this class are placed into public school. Others move on to another Orange Grove classroom where more goals can be reached and they can eventually achieve success in the working world. I want to provide them with as many experiences outside the classroom that I can. When I worked with the adults, um, as I talked to the families of the adults and, and read through their files, one of the things that I repeatedly noticed was that when the families had provided their individual with opportunities, extensive opportunities, that they often excelled beyond the prognosis of their disability. So I decided if I ever went to the classroom that I would try to do that within the classroom. Most of my parents tell me that the only opportunity that their child has for normal teenage activities is what we plan for them 
here in the classroom. We do a lot of field trips. We explore the community. We've done everything there is to do from amusement parks to art galleries. The more we can do, the more I can see it affect their skill level, affect their knowledge. It, it affects all around what they do. We find each child's skill level, what they excel in, and that we build on those so that they can eventually find that self-esteem to contribute to the community, that they have something to offer to the community, and that it affects their self-worth, they recognize their integrity. For parents, Orange Grove opens new horizons that they never thought their children would see. And they receive a great deal of encouragement from a very supportive staff. Some of the parents, um, you know, look at some of the other kids here and they say, man, I mean, I can't believe what they're doing. It's patience. Value the little things. Value the, the little progression. I mean, I'm not looking at uh, that say Josh from today on tomorrow is going to count to 10. It took us a year and a half, but it's great. And I mean, he recognized every number. He also recognizes every letter in his name. That's great, you know, because that is a functional thing for him to have, to recognize his name. To know that if I put a, a card in his pocket when he's older with his telephone number on it, with his name and street address, that that's what it is. Amazingly, completing what may seem to be small achievements can be built upon to successfully move into the working world. In fact, those who graduate from these classes usually move on to working in the community or work for pay opportunities in other areas of the center. One such place for employment opportunities can be found in the Industrial Training Center, which is on the Orange Grove campus. Established in the mid-1950s, this center provides valuable employment opportunities for over 150. We work with adult clients, basically from early 20s to our oldest person is 86 years old. Um, we do vocational activities here, we do work, we contract with uh, different area businesses. We do assembly work, um, we do packaging, we do heat sealing, we do um, heat shrinking, um, we do envelope stuffing, collating, uh, just a variety of different things and we're open to, it. maybe we haven't done it yet, but uh, we're open to uh, bid on any kind of contract work that anybody's interested in uh, having us do. These eager workers quickly discover that employment offers great reward. If you want some money for uh, my vacation days, I go to camp and get care of my aunt because my mama's gone. And workers such as Linda Rivas gain greater self-confidence as they master various skills that are taught at the Industrial Training Center. Here, she is working on a machine that heat seals packages. If you don't be careful with it, you get burnt. Like you turn it on, you, uh, you get burnt. You better watch it. Yet the Industrial Training Center at Orange Grove offers much more than just a place to work. Although we do work here, we work on a dozen other needs and, and desires of individuals. We have um, academic programs here, we have computer training programs here, reading programs. We have folks that are interested in um, the arts and, and do acting and things like that. We use singing, arts and crafts. We just it depends on the individual. Um, what the individual has an interest in, if we can provide that service, then we'll provide that service for them. Meeting the needs of each individual is an integral part of the Industrial Training Center. Just like anything else, it gives people things to do, it gives people things to look forward to. Some of the things we do, people have a real passion for, so it, it provides you know that, that, that kind of passion to, to, to do during the day. So it gives it's a social place. Um, people come here, uh, they meet with their friends, they interact. It's like going to work. I think the people really enjoy it. If, if we have a snow day or something or a day off, people are a little upset. It's a shame that they're not coming to work. And Linda Rivas agrees. My friend's here. The Industrial Training Center is always searching for businesses that would benefit from the wide variety of work that can be done here. For companies, this is a win-win situation. They get competitive rates, they can have the work done off-site, and it is accomplished with thorough and enthusiastic workers. 
In order to explore the contract opportunities here, the companies first indicate to the center what type of work they need completed. We'll do a time study on that so we can give them a bid. And if the bid that we give them works for them, then hopefully we'll get the uh, contract work. We do some work for Chattanooga Printing Company. Uh, we collate, um, we package, just anything that we can do uh, with our hands uh, repetitively. We can, we can do large numbers. Um, we can do sometimes, depending on what kind of uh, units they are, maybe 50,000 units a day. It just depends on uh, you know, what the work is. Another vocational training opportunity at Orange Grove occurs at the John F. Germ Recycling Center. Established in 1988, the Recycling Center has a major positive impact on those who work here, other programs at Orange Grove, and the entire community. On average, one and a half million pounds of recycled material are processed at this center each month, alleviating quite a burden on the area landfills. Actually, we do all of the recycling for the city of Chattanooga and some of the surrounding areas, too. We have two balers, and we bale paper products and also different plastic products, aluminum and metal. And then it's in the big bales. The trucks come and pick it up, and we sell it to various industries to be reused. It has been very helpful not just to our program, but to other programs throughout the center that we have been able to help them with the proceeds. In addition to the positive impact the Recycling Center has on our environment, a major outreach program happens at the center's Caldwell Learning Place. Each year, over 5,000 school children visit the Recycling Center, where they learn the importance of recycling and take a tour of the processing area. They begin with learning why we need to preserve our environment, how they can make a difference, and then take a tour of the center to see what happens to the products that are recycled. On their tour, the students see how seriously these Orange Grove trainees take their work. If you treat clients as if they are a regular worker like you and I, then they, they come up to those standards. And uh, we have seen such wonderful progress in some of our students that have come from various areas throughout the center, and the progress they have made is just outstanding. Uh, they have um, become more verbal. They have become... Uh, actually stronger physically because because in many of the classrooms they have been sitting and doing paperwork or, or more di different types of tasks and now they're here they're more physical and uh, they've become stronger and uh, and healthier I think. Getting paid for their work is great incentive for these Orange Grove trainees but so is the satisfaction of successfully completing the tasks of the day. Well the main job when you get the job done you really got to stay at it and stay on or stay on on task. The special relationship between trainee and staff is also very gratifying for everyone who works at the recycling center. They love to interact with the staff and we are a small group here and it's a pretty static group that stays here pretty constantly and we become more of a, although it is a work setting, it's, uh, we've all become fast friends and, uh, and enjoy working together. Many enjoy working at the recycling center so much that they decide to stay here. But as others meet their goals, they choose to move to other supervised employment opportunities in the community. One such work site is at Erlanger Medical Center. That is a situation where somebody would just become employed just like you and I would in the community uh, for a business that just needs maybe one or two people to come in and do a job that's not being done efficiently. Then they can utilize our people who have a history of being very dependable and that type of thing. They're called enclaves because they are a group of individuals that work in the community with a supervisor. The supervisor is provided by Orange Grove Center. All of the clients remain Orange Grove Center employees so that it relieves the company of any liability or any excess training that might need to be done and then they would lose that staff. This allows them to have a service that fulfills the job that they need to be done every day. The goal of the program is really for Orange Grove to provide the appropriate amount of support for an individual to be long-term successful in the community and employment. Here we do a service for Erlanger. Um, we bail all of their cardboard that comes from the entire hospital. We also collect all of their confidential paper in the hospital, bring it here and shred it on an industrial shredder, and we bail that shredded paper as well, and then send that off to um, be taken care of at Rock 10. As with any type of employment, a paycheck is great incentive. I just like the money. 
I just like to buy new clothes and shoes and stuff like that. Orange Grove trainees realize that employment, such as this at Erlanger, can provide valuable training, leading to a bright future. Learn. You know, learn that way I know how to do things the right way. That way once I learn, I know how to do job right. Now, um, I like to learn if I can really get outside job. It will help me out a lot better. Orange Grove is always looking for new area businesses that could prosper from such a working partnership. An enclave setting would really be good for a larger company who has um, to utilize a great deal of employees doing perhaps one certain thing. Um, we have done enclaves in production type settings before where they have difficulty keeping employees and we can send in a number of employees to do a specific job and they know that we'll be there every day. Orange Grove has had an enclave at Erlanger since 1998 with much success for both the people who work here and the hospital. Employees with disabilities really are an advantage that they will really bring just a real sense of satisfaction I think to the people who work there and that we'd like to encourage anybody who's even interested in hearing about our program to contact us. The Orange Grove goal of providing its trainees as much independence as possible doesn't stop with job training and employment opportunities. You ready for it? Mm -hmm. Here we come. Ready or not? Orange Grove also offers residential settings that create a sense of independence without losing a sense of family. It tends to match a normal rhythm of life, whereas children grow up in their, in their family home and at some point they seek, reach independence or as much independence as possible. That's what the individual wants. To be honest, that's a lot of times what the family wants too. So it's sort of the natural rhythm of life and it mirrors what's happening in our society or what we hope happens in most places in our society today. The residential program starts at primarily the age of young adults and extends well beyond retirement years. The home settings are so natural that you would probably not guess that this is one of them. The key to a rewarding experience in a residential setting, such as this, is the group home manager. And our screening is, is, is pretty rigorous. Everybody has to have a complete background check, many interviews, and it's not interviews with just an individual. It's interviews about with the whole family because as a group home manager, it's really a lifestyle choice. So it needs to be made seriously, and uh, we need to be serious about who's selected to go in there. It's a huge responsibility, and, uh, and they do a wonderful job. Can't drink cold, okay. <laughs> That's okay. Tony Jeno is the manager for this group home. He lives here with his wife and two school-aged children. For the entire family, this is the answer to a heartfelt calling. I like the idea of being able to work with those people who have special needs and treat them like a family member and let them have an opportunity to grow and expand. Um, let them understand that this is their house, give them the skills they need to take care of themselves, and uh, just enjoy their company. There it is. There it is. Tony works hard to make sure that the parents of the fellows who stay in this home know that their children are well cared for. I know it, it must be difficult, but as we work together, we can make it a, a promising transition to where the parents can feel comfortable with it. And know as they get older, they don't need to worry as much for their child. And also we can give them the care that the parents would expect. Christopher Faust has lived in this group home for several years and his happiness here has meant everything to his parents. It's meant that he has gained some independence of his own. He's learned to do things for himself that I used to do for him. And he's made a lot of new friends, which he loves. And he's matured. It gives me peace of mind to know that Christopher will have a place to live in the future when we're no longer here. Parents are welcomed at their children's group home anytime and are encouraged to remain an integral part of their lives. 
Every other weekend, the Fowls pick up Christopher and take him home to spend Saturday and Sunday with them. The beauty part about the Orange Grove setting is that he's still part of our family. And, uh, you know, it's not like he went away and never came back. He is still part of us. In addition to incredible parental support, Orange Grove benefits from its broad spectrum of volunteers. The volunteer department strives to match the interest of the volunteer with the needs of the center. We have volunteers that range from volunteering as, as board members or, or a committee member on a, on a special committee at, at the center to people who, who work directly with children and adults served at Orange Grove and, and, and direct interaction, whether it be assisting with a teacher in a, in a uh, classroom or whether it's involved in a recreational activity or in one of our residences. The community partnerships Orange Grove has formed and the model it has become in caring for people with special needs has put the center at the forefront of the industry. There are few communities in the nation that have seen this kind of a project and this kind of, of truly uh, nationwide uh, reputation that Orange Grove has developed. And, and Chattanooga can be, be very proud. If you were to go to Atlanta, if you were to go to Chicago, if you were to go to surrounding communities, you wouldn't find an Orange Grove Center, typically. And, and I think we forget that. We think that, that Orange Groves are, are out there across the nation, and, and frankly, they're not. This, this is very special, very unique, and Chattanooga should be very proud. Since 1953, Orange Grove has been a shining example of how a parent's dream for his child can be realized. Sometimes the dreams must change, and for those that must, Orange Grove has been there to provide hope and encouragement. We moved to Cleveland, Tennessee from Nashville in the early 70s, and Christopher had just been diagnosed with cerebral palsy, and of course we were pretty much in a state of shock, but I believe that God sent us to this area because Chattanooga is so rich in their services to the handicapped and the disabled, people with special needs. And um, I just feel like that whatever the need a child would have, a special needs child, that somewhere at Orange Grove, it's there. As Orange Grove Center in Chattanooga, Tennessee looks toward the future, it will continue to expand the opportunities for a population that was once overlooked by society. Orange Grove will also preserve the pioneering spirit of its founders 50 years ago in recognizing, supporting, and celebrating the qualities of the individual. For a VHS copy of this program, send $24.95 plus $4.95 shipping and handling to WTCI Video Services, 4411 Am Nicola Highway, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37406. Or call 629-0045 or by email, bobwilliams at wtci.pbs.org. When ordering, please include the program title, date, and time of broadcast.